Welcome to CivilNet. My guest is Vaheni Gorosian. He's the founder of Engineer X. So it's a multidisciplinary engineering firm that's providing a large panel of uh, services, but that's also invested in developing the uh, education of engineers in Armenia. On April 10, the gathering of SolidWorks champion engineers took place here in Yerevan. And for the occasion, Mr. Nigorosian flew from Massachusetts to Yerevan. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. So first question, could you first tell us more about uh, the event that took place in Yerevan? Yeah, sure. So uh, let me just back up a little bit. Uh, three, four years ago when I started uh, EngineerX, our first hire was uh, David. So he's our director of engineering. And um, quickly, my good friend Andre Kuyumjan, who is the global client executive of the Soul System SolidWorks, uh, he said, Vahe, he goes, uh, we need to start a user group. We need to do a whole bunch of things. He's, he's kind of like my advisor in, in all of this. And with Andre's help and David, we started a user group, the first Armenian SolidWorks user group. And David has been becoming a champion of that user group. It's basically uh, open to any engineer in the country that they can come together, discuss SolidWorks, discuss engineering. We bring in special guests from outside to talk remotely or whatever. Uh, we brought in guests into the country to talk to the uh, engineers. More features, benefits uh, of SolidWorks and, and other ways that they can increase their talents and their capabilities. So in February, for the first time, my company represented Hayastan at their user group conference in Dallas, Texas. So David flew in, a couple of other of my teammates flew in, and we represented Armenia, Hayastan, in Dallas. So when we came back, David wanted to do a user group here to talk about our experiences in Dallas. And uh, it's the largest uh, community of engineers, three to 4,000 engineers get together. Um, SolidWorks uh, unveils their newest products, their newest uh, features and benefits to uh, SolidWorks, the 3D uh, platform. Um, and David wanted to show the users here what he learned in Dallas. Um, so you're the head of Engineer X, as we already said, and you said it too. You're from the US. How did the, the, the idea to develop this project in our little land of the Caucasus appear? So as I said before, so my great friend Andre Kuyumjan and I have been friends. Uh, my dad actually coached him in uh, basketball when he was a little kid. Uh, we, we golf together, we, our families hang out together, and we had this the idea, this call it a dream of opening up an engineering firm in Armenia, in Hayastan. And since he works for the, the largest 3D um, mechanical engineering software company in the world, 75% of all mechanical engineers use SolidWorks. It's system deso. Correct. So, He's like, Vahe, there's no representation of the largest software company in the country. We need to bring it here. So it's been probably a 10 year idea that we've had. And four years ago, uh, it became real. OK, so could you tell us more about well, we'll talk about engineering, but what's the system that so and how does that what, what makes it so important in terms of uh, engineering and what it can bring to a country? OK, that's a great question. Thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. So like I said before, 75% of mechanical engineers use SolidWorks around the world. The largest companies in the world use SolidWorks. So whenever they're gonna design anything, it's done in SolidWorks. Without having the representation here in Hayastan, the students don't have access to student versions of it. There's free apps for kids. The universities don't have the curriculum, proper curriculum to teach it. They can't get discounts. They can't afford it because they're paying above retail price. Um, there's certifications. There's the workshops that we're doing. All that now is possible because we have brought, we are the official representatives of SolidWorks in Hayastan. Um, and what that also does is as the users, there are users of SolidWorks in Hayastan, I'm not saying there isn't, but they're not using the real versions. They're using hacked versions. They're using pirated software. No company, no legitimate company in the world is going to work with anyone that's using pirated software. So now they have the opportunity to go legitimate and expand their own uh, fields. 
Um, so you're working also with uh, Armenian engineers, local ones. Um, how is the composition of the, 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 the company? How many people are working? How many people are you training? That, that's a, so we have, right now we have, depending on our workload, we have seven or eight engineers. Um, we have already started, David has, has already started uh, a middle school program at the, correct me if I'm wrong, the Mkhatir Sebastia School. Mkhatir mm -hmm. Sebastia School. school. Yes. Yeah, so we've already had a uh, program designed for those kids where they go in and we assist their teachers in having them design uh, things on uh, SOLIDWORKS apps for kids. So that's, that's the first step. The first step is to grow the ecosystem of engineering. And it starts with little kids, getting them excited about engineering, getting them excited about designing things. Then the next step is where do they go from there? They got to go to university. So that's my next goal is to go to Polytechnical School. AUA already has SOLIDWORKS, which is great. Mm -hmm. And we'll assist them in acquiring it, building the um, programs, building the curriculum for the uh, college students to become SOLIDWORKS certified users. And once they become a SOLIDWORKS certified user, when they graduate, mm -hmm. they'll be ready to work because employers know that they're SOLIDWORKS certified users. So you already gave a, a, a hint, but I'm gonna ask, how's the mechanic of the firm articulated in general and what's the mission exactly of the firm, be it in terms of business and in terms of education? My business? Yeah. So my business is in two parts. The first part is a mechanical design uh, firm. So companies from outside of Hayastan uh, give us projects, plans, our engineers design them in 3D, and then we send it back to them. The reason why this is really important, I don't want to take any business from inside of the country. That's not my goal. My goal is to bring revenue from outside of Hayastan here uh, to create more jobs. Second, now I have become the official reseller of SOLIDWORKS in Hayastan. So now my customers are in Armenia. And I want to assist them to buy SOLIDWORKS the legitimate way. I could provide technical support. I could provide training in the local language. I can provide certifications. I could provide a lot of different things that they didn't have access before. And that's pretty much like the scope of our business. And the education part, so you, get, you told us that it was more a way to, to boost and to encourage and motivate young uh, people from Armenia to, to get into engineering. Why, why is it so important for you as a businessman who's living in Massachusetts? You have a, your life there. I mean, you weren't forced to come to Armenia and, and start something that, that may be risky for some people. Um, so what was the motivation behind this? I heard that you actually fell in love in Armenia when you came in 2018. So that's true. So when I came for the first time, I absolutely fell in love with the country. And my background is more building businesses and uh, so forth. Uh, I'm actually not an engineer. So when I came, I said to myself, wow, this is fantastic. And I looked at the country in a little different lens. I looked at it as the wild, wild west. I was like, wow, this is wide open. Like, look at the opportunities that are here where in America, you know, the, the market is saturated. In East, Western Europe, it's saturated, it's very developed. Where here, it's new, it's, it's getting going. And since, you know, I kind of looked at it from a different lens and maybe philanthropy, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But, and when I came back and I was like, Andre, remember how we were talking about engineering and this, that, I said, I think this could be a reality. So we did a couple of years of due diligence and actually COVID hit, uh, didn't stop us. We, we opened up, I couldn't travel here. I had canceled my flight 58 times. Then the war happened in September. I had already opened up my office. That still didn't stop us. And I was blessed to have a really, really good team to start off with. Uh, and they, they brought us to the level where we're at, we're at today, uh, where we finally became the SOLIDWORKS reseller. And the reason why it's so important to go back to answer your question is because a country uh, of our size, look, we've invented so many things around the world, right? The ATM machine, the MIG, uh, the automatic transmission, uh, uh, the green dye on the dollar bill was invented by Armenians, oh, wow. right? Okay. Yeah, there's so many, it's, it's almost endless. And I feel 
you know, there's probably a brain drain a little bit. And a country needs these types of people in the country to develop the in-house skills and techniques and abilities to, to grow its own infrastructure and to attract people. Why can't Hayastan become the engineering capital of the world, the Silicon Valley of the world? Mm -hmm. We have the ability. Yes, we have, we ha we're a landlocked country, but we can export our brains. That, that, that's what my thinking was. That was actually my uh, second question also. So um, we know, uh, third question, we know that Armenia lacks of many things in terms of science, but we have the brains, we don't have the budget, um, and we may not have the ambition I'm speaking about Armenia, mm -hmm. uh, to achieve greater technology breakthroughs. So how can we mob mobilize the potential to boost engineering here? So going, going back to what I said, right? It starts, from, it's, it starts from the kids. They need to be excited about, uh, they need to be passionate about something, right? And if they don't have the, uh, if they can't see it, if they can't feel it, if they can't touch it, how would they know, right? We have all of these abilities in America, it's, it's at our fingertips. So our kids have those abilities to test new different things, but, but I, we don't have that here. So that's why we started our company and, and a big focus is education, is going to these kids and getting them excited about engineering. I don't care what kind of engineering it is because within mechanical engineering, there's many, many different scopes and we need all of that here in this country. So if those kids get excited, they want to become engineers, they go to school, they learn engineering. Now we have a, a talent pool ready to be employed. People like me can go and approach larger companies and, be, and, and offer them engineering services here. Why go to India? Why go to China? Why go to uh, other parts of Eastern Europe when Hayastan is your engineering capital of the world? Come over here. Open up your office here, work with us here, because we have the talent here. And they're not going to come unless there's talent. But the thing is, like, we know that in Armenia, the research and development situation in Armenia is pretty weak in a way compared to much more competitive uh, countries. And, and the research and development field depends on the goodwilling of the government. So it's great to see that uh, your kind of people are doing things to boost it. But if there is no partnership in a way or um, communication with the government to, to boost this field, how, how do we do in this case? I think private industry takes care of itself. So look, I am not a philanthropic organization. I'm here to make money, right? Um, and at the same time, I can use those resources to make investments in education for myself. So if I'm growing my engineering designing services field uh, business and I need more employees, how am I going to get them? They're not going to grow from the trees, right? I'm looking five, 10 years, 15 years for my own business. So that's why I'm going to the schools, getting those kids ready. So when they graduate, they'll be coming to me for a job and I'll have, I'll have the business ready to offer them a good job at a good wage. I think that's one way to answer the question. The private sector can take care of the research and development if they make the right uh, choices. Yeah, the government can help. They can make, uh, you know, lower taxes, do a lot of different things. But I feel like the private sector can solve a lot of those issues. And hopefully, one of the reasons why I'm doing the, all these uh, media interviews is maybe somebody in the diaspora sees what we're doing here and it's possible for them to do the same thing. Because we have a great diaspora. We have very talented, knowledgeable people. And come over here and try it. Use, we need your knowledge here. To, to grow the research and, and development, like you're saying. And then last question, that's more, I would say, political. Uh, but we know that Armenia is in conflict with its neighbor Azerbaijan mm -hmm. and the probability of a war is pretty high. So how can we do to, 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 in terms of engineering to boost the defense of the country? That's a huge topic we talk about here. Mm -hmm. the, the, the problem is that we don't have um, so we, we, we buy from other countries, we don't produce anything. Uh, that may seem a, a weak point for us. What do you think we should do? I completely agree with you. And that's my goal. My goal is to uh, grow the talent, grow our knowledge base, grow our capabilities so we can create everything ourselves. So we're not, we're not dependent on anyone 
to uh, buy weapons, to create drones, to do this. Let's grow our aerospace technology. Let's grow our drone technology. Let's grow our missile technology. Let's do all of that stuff, but let's do it ourselves so we're not dependent on anyone else to do that. And again, you need mechanical engineers in specific fields to design these things, to, to create these things. And that is somewhere where maybe you could have a partnership with the, with the defense industry or defense companies. Um, I am all for that. I firmly believe that our country should be independent, self-dependent self, uh, on growing these industries. So we're not relying on other countries and other people to help us with the defense technologies. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Nikolasian, for this talk. Thank you, Ani. I really appreciate uh, getting invited. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching and continue to follow CivilNet.